Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and this is the second part of my Cross River Rail video series and this is what we're going to cover. So in this video I'll be explaining the majority of the underground section of Cross River Rail which includes four new stations. I'll start here at Roma Street and then cover the new Albert Street station in the heart of Brisbane CBD. Then under the Brisbane River to Wollongabba where a new underground station is being built close to the existing busway station. And then finishing with the new Cross River Rail Station at Boggo Road and its connection to the existing Park Road Railway Station and Boggo Road Busway Station. And if you missed part 1 that covered the northern part of Cross River Rail including the new Main Yard North Maintenance Facility, the complete rebuilding of Exhibition Station and the Northern Tunnel Portal then it's appearing now in the top right and is the first link in the description below. So before getting into the Cross River Rail works I'll briefly cover the existing Roma Street Station. It's the largest but not the busiest station in Brisbane and it currently has 10 platforms including two for buses that use the Inner Northern Busway. Yes, you heard that right, Brisbane's busways also have platform numbers. More on this later. Besides being an important station for suburban services, it's also the terminus for regional trains such as the Queensland Tilt train that runs to Bundaberg and Rockhampton, along with the Spirit of Queensland that runs all the way to Cairns. And these regional trains go via the exhibition loop that I covered in part 1. The main entrance to Roma Street Station is on Roma Street itself, which is on the south side. And on the north side there is an additional entrance for the Brisbane Coach Terminal and Roma Street Parkland. Both entrances lead to the station subway, which has a single escalator and stairs to the suburban platforms on the west side, with lifts for step-free access on the east side. So I'm on platform 3 and I believe the only train that departs from here is the XPT to Sydney so it's very quiet and peaceful and also all around me is the original Heritage Station building. It was designed by Francis Drummond Greville Stanley who was the Queensland colonial architect at the time and it was built between 1873 and 1875. This was the first building for Roma Street Station and when it opened the station entrance was on the south side with just a single platform on the north side. Back then the only train service was to Ipswich and Toowoomba so one terminating platform was sufficient. In the 1940s the building was extensively renovated and a platform was added on the south side which is now platform 3. As I mentioned in part 1, virtually all lines in Queensland are narrow gauge and Platform 3 has dual gauge track to cater for the daily Sydney XPT service which is currently departing from this platform very early in the morning. So at other times Platform 3 is the perfect place to relax, chill out and enjoy these photos of the station's history. So Roma Street is the first of four new Cross River Rail underground stations and although it integrates into the existing station it has all the hallmarks of a brand new one. The Cross River Rail platforms will be within a mined cavern that goes under the original Heritage Station building, Platform 3 and the existing busway platforms. And just here on Roma Street will be a brand new station entrance. And to make way for this new station entrance the ugliest building in Brisbane or more harshly the ugliest building in Queensland had to go. And that building was the Brisbane Transit Centre. The station entrance was on the ground floor of this building with a coach terminal on the third floor and this moved to its current location on Parkland Crescent. It also had three office towers above it which did a sterling job of blocking the Roma Street views of the original station building. So following demolition and a short grieving period this temporary station entrance was put into place and this led to temporary passageways that connected with the existing station subway. And on the walls of this passageway were some helpful Cross River Rail information displays including this station diagram. So number one is the new station entrance and concourse and here is an artist impression of what it will look like from Roma Street. The main entrance will be just here on the east side and will be next to this pedestrian plaza. And in this 360 degree image which is on the Cross River Rail website you can see the station entrance again here along with the busway platform 1 entrance through the trees and now the rest of the plaza with the CBD in the background. The station concourse will have escalators and lifts that lead down to this attic connection which is the technical name for an underground passageway and this will lead to the Cross River Rail underground platforms. And those lifts and escalators along with the station entrance will all be within this excavated rectangular box. And this was how it looked in February 2022. This clip was included in a Queensland Government media release which I'll link to below. This was in December 2022 with the beginnings of the station entrance appearing behind this large tree. And now in April 2023 
and you can see the station building beginning to take shape. Now peering over the hoardings for a closer view, thanks to Steve's technology and transit for this clip. You'll hear Steve's deep voice in a moment, so keep watching. This is now in August, and the entrance building is much higher, and I reckon it's now as tall as it will go, so we should see the roof and canopy appearing soon. And peering over the hoardings, you can see vertical supports, and what looks like a floor ceiling structure here. On the 26th of May 2023, the temporary entrance and passageway moved to a location that will be within the new concourse. And over the next few months, the new station entrance will be built around this passageway. The permanent connection will be slightly to the right of this, and will link this new concourse with the existing station subway. Here is the temporary entrance that was relocated on the 26th of May, with the new station building to the left of it. Now over to Brisbane Transit YouTuber Steve to explain this further. You can see that they've got stairs, as well as a ramp for people with mobility impairments. And up here is where it connects into the existing station concourse, with the go-kart gates just up to the right. If you walk up Roma Street, you can still access the old temporary station entrance, but now this is only connected to the section of Busway Platform 1 which is open. But this served as the main station entrance to Roma Street for a number of years while they were constructing the underground station box. Thanks for that Steve! Do check out his YouTube channel for regular updates on Cross River Rail and other transport projects in Brisbane and elsewhere. Link now appearing in the top right and also in the description below, and you'll hear more from Steve throughout this video. Now back to the new concourse, and you can see the escalators and lifts here, and go-kart gates appear to be on both the east and west sides. Now although it doesn't look like it from this image, my understanding is that passengers transferring from Cross River Rail to other trains won't be required to tap off and back on again. This passageway from the new entrance will go to the existing subway, and you'll be pleased to know that this is getting an upgrade. Work has now started on this, and by September 2023, there were hoardings around most of the eastern side of the subway. All the existing floor and wall tiles will be replaced, and there will be new ceiling panels and better lighting. And when complete, it will have a similar look and feel to the new entrance concourse and underground Cross River Rail platforms. So now looking at the underground connection from the new concourse to the Cross River Rail platforms, and this will be three separate passageways. And in this media clip, the location of these passageways was marked before excavation commenced. In this time-lapsed media clip, you can see the three passageways being excavated. And then the station concourse beginning to be built. The bottom of this box is 20 metres below the ground. This time-lapse shows all the work that happened during 2022. And whilst I grab myself a cuppa, you can enjoy seeing this station concourse being built right before your eyes. So these three passageways lead to the mezzanine level within the mined cavern, and from this level, four banks of escalators and two lifts go down to the platforms below. All four underground stations will have platform screen doors. Their most obvious benefit is to provide a physical barrier that will stop people or objects falling onto the tracks. They also enable the stations to be air conditioned, by creating a seal between the trains, tracks and tunnels. Platform screen doors allow the entire platform area to be used, with no need for a yellow line close to the platform edge, which means that more passengers can safely wait for their next train. They allow trains to approach the station and depart at higher speeds, even when platforms are crowded, and platform screen doors reduce the noise from trains too. Finally, they reduce station dwell times, as passengers know where to stand and it discourages people from boarding a train when the doors are closing. And they look nice too. The new ETCS signalling system will ensure that the trains line up with the doors, so let's talk about that. ETCS stands for European Train Control System, and Cross River Rail will use ETCS Level 2, which replaces trackside signals and allows trains to be closer together, especially at lower speeds. ETCS is currently being trialled on the Shorncliffe line, and will become the new signalling system for all suburban lines, not just the Cross River Rail ones. On the tracks at regular intervals will be little yellow boxes which are known as balises. These are electronic position markers that record the speed of the train and direction of travel. This information is then sent to the train's onboard computer, where it is transmitted wirelessly via trackside or internal wireless access points to the Central Rail Management Centre. With all other trains doing exactly the same thing, the Central Rail Management Centre knows precisely where each train is so it can instantly determine whether certain trains need to change speed to maintain separation with other trains. 
The driver will see this information on their in-cab screens and will react accordingly by slowing down, speeding up or stopping. When the train passes over the next Belize, the Central Rail Management Centre will get updated speed and location information from the train's onboard computer and the process repeats itself. ETCS Level 2 comes with some automation and this includes the ability for trains to line up correctly with the platform screen doors and I'm sure the train drivers will appreciate this. So that's my simplified and hopefully correct explanation of ETCS and any experts in this field or signalling nerds are welcome to elaborate further in the comments below. The platforms for all four underground stations will be 220 metres in length. The current six car NGR trains are about 146 metres long, so there is space for an extra three carriages, which would make it a nine car train. It's virtually impossible to lengthen underground platforms in the future, so it's wonderful to see that these platforms have been designed to cater for future usage. So now back to Roma Street Station, and this media clip shows how the mined cavern for the underground platforms was progressing during 2022. You can see that the permanent lining within the station cavern is now complete. These platforms are 27 metres below ground, but there is another station with deeper platforms, as you'll soon discover. Just here is part of the mezzanine level, and I reckon this work on the left is for the future escalators. And between this and the taller wall will be the tracks and platform screen doors. And here is one final look at this cavern. This photo, which is on the Cross River Rail website, was taken in July 2023, and this gap here is where one of the four banks of escalators will go, and behind this is a structure for further escalators. So here's a quick recap, courtesy of another media clip. So escalators or lifts from the station concourse lead to these three connecting passageways. The lifts to the platform are on the left. Passengers can then turn left or right to access one of the four banks of escalators that go down to the platforms. In this video animation, the platform numbers are 1 and 2, but as these are currently used for the busway, it will be interesting to see whether these become 11 and 12 instead, or perhaps A and B. In the original plans, the busway was going to be realigned to go underground with new platforms within the new station concourse. That was changed in 2021, and now the existing busway platforms 1 and 2 will be extended west towards the new entrance. So this is the canopy for busway platform 1, and you can see work to extend this platform westwards occurring alongside the station box. And in this area here is where the pedestrian plaza will be, with the stairs and lifts to this busway platform being over on the left. As you can see, a new canopy is being built on platform 2, and this is both for busway passengers and those waiting for the XPT service to Sydney, which will use this platform in the future. The XPT used to use platform 2, but switched to platform 3 temporarily when Cross River Rail Works started. And this means that the busway side of platform 2 will be significantly longer than it currently is. The existing lifts, stairs and escalators to this platform will be retained. Those last clips were in April, and by August the canopy was in place and looked finished. But Steve doesn't like it very much. It is unfortunate that it is very architecturally boring. They put a lot of effort into the architectural design of the stations down on the south side, so it's disappointing to see that this canopy is basically just a boring metal box. Anyway, back to the underground Cross River Rail Station, and at the western end there will be a second passageway that would lead to a services building, which is number 5 on this diagram. This won't be used by passengers except in an emergency. The services building is already being constructed, and this is how it looked in December 2022. And by April 2023, it was a whole lot bigger. And by September 2023, it had reached its designed height. Services buildings are essential for modern underground railways, as they house tunnel ventilation systems, emergency exits, and often signalling and communications equipment, including those that control the platform screen doors. There will also be an emergency exit on the east side, which will come out close to the temporary demountables and acoustic shed. And on the acoustic shed, I couldn't help noticing how similar the Cross River Rail logo is to the logo used for London's Cross Rail project, which opened last year as the Elizabeth Line. Yep, that works. I wonder if it was a Brit that came up with the logo. Let's now follow the tunnel alignment from Roma Street to the second underground station at Albert Street. From Roma Street Station, the tunnels continue under Emma Miller Place, then under Turbot Street, then below this car park that has a small green space above it. The tunnels then go under Anne Street, but narrowly avoid disturbing King George V, and miss Brisbane City Hall by running under this pedestrian plaza, which has a busway station underneath it, so it's below that too. 
At the end of this plaza, the tunnels go under Adelaide Street and then follow Albert Street, which already has the Inner Northern Busway beneath it, so the Cross River Rail tunnels are below the busway tunnels. It's then under Queen Street, which has a busway station below it. And further along Albert Street is the start of the station box for Albert Street Station, which also goes under Elizabeth Street. This construction site behind me will be for one of the new entrances to Albert Street Station, which is right in the heart of Brisbane's CBD. Albert Street is the first new station to be built within Brisbane's CBD in over 120 years. It will take the pressure off Central Station, which is currently Brisbane's busiest station. At peak times, overcrowded platforms and queues for the escalators and stairs are already an issue, and this will only get worse as South East Queensland's population grows, hence the need for an additional CBD station. The main entrance to Albert Street Station will be on Albert Street, close to the corner with Mary Street. There will be a second entrance further north, and this is also on Albert Street and is close to the Queen Street shopping mall. This northern entrance will be next to the JD Sports Store, which is on the corner with Elizabeth Street, and its neighbour on the other side is a bottle shop. It's at 142 Albert Street, and this white building with the retail outlets below was demolished to make way for this station entrance and concourse. In April 2023, you couldn't see any sign of the new station building from the street. And in August, Steve got a little closer. Peeking through this hole in the gate, we can see one concrete shaft that started to come up above ground level. This photo from Cross River Rail is looking in the other direction. Albert Street and the future station entrance is here, and this is the shaft that Steve just pointed out. One of the station box walls is now visible on the right. This is 1.2 metres thick and descends to 26 metres. By early September, a second shaft had become visible above the hoardings. Once complete, the northern entrance will lead to two banks of escalators that will bring passengers to an underground passageway that will lead to the mezzanine level, which is part of the mined cavern. And once through the go-kart gates, there will be four banks of escalators to the platforms below. There is a lift from this entrance as well, and two lifts down to the platforms. The platforms will be 31 metres below ground, so that's 4 metres deeper than at Roma Street, and will be of a very similar design, with a large island platform that has escalators and lifts in the middle. So now for the main Albert Street station entrance, which is much larger, and has a services building above it, which would look like this. And below that will be a large canopy that will prominently mark this station entrance, making it obvious to anyone that is approaching it. There will be entrances on both the northern and southern sides, which will lead to two banks of escalators, one for each side. And whichever one you take will lead to two further banks of escalators that operate in a switchback arrangement. So that's six banks of escalators in total, with two sets for each intermediate level. And just like at the northern entrance, there is a short passageway at the bottom of the escalators that leads to the go-kart gates, which mark the entrance to the mezzanine level that contains the platform lifts and escalators. Here is a virtual journey from a train to the main entrance. So from the platform, it's up one of the four banks of escalators to the mezzanine level, passing one of the platform lifts and then another bank of platform escalators. Now look out for the go-kart gates, which are directly ahead and to the right. And once through these, you'll see the bottom bank of escalators. There will be lifts as well, but these are not shown in this animation. Notice this large space at the intermediate level, which will be useful at busy times. So now up the second bank of escalators to another intermediate level, and then up the third bank of escalators to the station entrance and street level. And the entrance leads into a large pedestrian plaza, which will be partially covered by the rather cool canopy that you saw earlier. The construction site for the main station entrance and concourse is on the southwest side of Albert Street and continues into Mary Street. And this fetching pink hoarding on Albert Street marks the start of the construction site, which is closed to traffic, but has a temporary passageway for pedestrians. And this comes out at Mary Street. How's it looking, Steve? Basically up till now, all of the progress has been underground here. Although if we look closer, there are a few little signs that it is starting to come up to the ground level. Crossing the road, we can get a little peek into the construction site here. And this should start becoming exciting as the construction's just up to ground level. But unfortunately, we can't see anything here yet. On the northeast side of Albert Street is the tunnelling support site, which has a large acoustic shed, with its entrance doors on Mary Street. And you may be wondering what was here before, so let's find out. To make way for the main station entrance and concourse required the demolition of this budget office block at 96 Albert Street. This photo is from Mary Street. And now from Albert Street. This building was 547 square metres, 
but the land area was over twice this size. The tunnelling support site that includes the acoustic shed required the demolition of these two buildings on Mary Street along with this uninviting access road and then 12 R&D Fitness on the corner and then the shops on Albert Street up to and including the Commonwealth Bank. Now as a little aside, did you know that in Brisbane's CBD the streets that run in a northwesterly direction are named after kings whilst those running in a northeasterly direction are named after queens? But as I'm not up on my royals, I am wondering who the f is Queen Alice, or Queen Charlotte for that matter. Anyway, back to Albert Street Station, and here are some construction photos courtesy of Cross River Rail. This one shows the main entrance being excavated on the left. This was in February 2021. The covered pedestrian walkway is below here, with the acoustic shed being to the right of this. And here is a photo of the mined cavern as it looked in May 2023 and now in June 2023. This is where the platforms and mezzanine level will be. And this Facebook video filmed in July 2023 shows that quite a lot of the mezzanine level is now in place with gaps for the escalators and lifts. After Albert Street Station, the tunnels go beneath Margaret Street and Alice Street and then under the Brisbane City Botanic Gardens, going slightly to the left of this beautiful flower garden, then under this tree, and coming out at what is currently a significant transport impediment. Behind me is where the Cross River Rail tunnels go under the Brisbane River, 42 metres below ground. And they bend slightly to the right as they do so, as you can see from this map. And this seemed like a far more relaxing option than swimming across. So now on the south side of the Brisbane River, and the tunnels are directly underneath where I'm standing now. And this is looking back across the river, with this speedboat marking the area where the tunnels cross deep below. So the tunnels now go under Kangaroo Point, close to where these abseilers are. And as I walk up these stairs, I know that once I reach the top, the tunnels will be 58 metres below my feet, and that is their deepest point. The tunnels then bend slightly to the right to go under River Terrace and its slow moving traffic, then below Bell Street, beneath this unloved house on Lewin Street, then Wormsley Street and Lockerbie Street. They now continue dead straight, going under this primary score on Anglesey Street and then beneath Mark Lane, going below this derelict land and under Vulture Street, where something interesting is happening on the other side. So I'm now at the Woolloongabba busway station and behind me is the Cross River Rail construction site which is alongside. The busway station itself is pretty interesting, so let's talk about it. Woolloongabba busway station opened in 2000 as part of the first section of the South East busway, so it's over 20 years old now. Its contemporary design makes it seem much newer. It looks more like a railway station than a busway station, with lifts, an overhead walkway, platform numbers, a help point. And next train, sorry I meant next bus displays. The busways themselves are purpose built roads that only buses are allowed to use. They have grade separated junctions, elevated sections, cuttings and tunnels. These allow buses to run faster and more reliably and helps keep traffic lights to an absolute minimum. They even have special bridges across the Brisbane River and underground stations within Brisbane's CBD. They complement the existing rail system by providing a frequent and reliable service, especially at peak times. Some of these busways will become part of the new bus rapid transit system which will be branded Brisbane Metro. It will use electric articulated buses such as this one on test, so it's not really a metro, but I won't go into that right now. Back to Wollongabba busway station, and the platforms are long enough to cater for several buses at once, and have full length canopies to protect passengers from the sun and rain and there are two lanes on each side to allow departing buses to easily pass other stationary buses. So why is a Cross River Rail station being built at Wollongabba? Well a big reason is to serve the nearby Gabba Stadium. This will be the main stadium for the Brisbane Olympics in 2032 and will be getting an additional 8,000 seats which will bring its total capacity to 50,000 people. And that's going to require a lot of trains to get people there and back home again. So let's take a look at the new Wollongabba Cross River Rail Station. The busway station is here, and the Cross River Rail Station will be behind and slightly to the north of it. The tunnels towards the city are marked in green, and those towards Bogger Road are in purple. Wollongabba Station will have a single entrance building that provides access to the lower concourse or mezzanine level, which leads to the island platform below. And there will be a services building behind this entrance. In this aerial photo taken in July 2023, you can see the services building here, and in front of this building are the beginnings of the station entrance and concourse. And when completed, it will look something like this. 
The two entrances to this station will be on the east side. Here is one of them, and now the other one. Both entrances lead to separate banks of four escalators, so that's eight escalators in total, so it's clearly designed to handle the large number of passengers that will use this station to get to events at the Gabba Stadium. And there will also be two lift shafts. The lifts will go directly to the lower concourse or mezzanine level, whilst the escalators will go to an intermediate level, where passengers will switch to the lower bank of escalators that descend to the mezzanine below, which has a larger central area that was excavated using the cut and cover method, and then mined caverns at either end. And you can see the cut but not yet covered section in this aerial photo. The northern and southern parts of the mezzanine and platform levels were excavated as a mined cavern, to avoid digging up Stanley Road, the busway and Vulture Street, as that wouldn't have gone down well with the locals. Supporting the lower concourse or mezzanine level are 180 precast concrete beams. Each beam consists of two or three concrete segments and weigh up to 70 tonnes. And that's what will be above you when you alight from a train, although it would look more like this. Here is one of the precast concrete segments, and now the complete beam. And you can see the join between the two segments here. This is the cavern where the northern and southern parts of the platform and mezzanine level will be, and this gantry crane lifts the beam up and turns it almost 90 degrees without touching the tunnel walls, and then carefully turns it to line up with the previous beam, so that it all slots into place. In August 2023, one of these beams was visible within the station box. The platforms are 27 metres below the ground, and that's the same depth as Roma Street Station. Here is an animated video tour from the platform to the entrance, and I'll use this to recap what I've covered so far. So just like at Roma Street and Albert Street stations, passengers will use escalators in the middle of the island platform to ascend to the mezzanine level above. Or they would take the lift, which comes out here. It's then across this concourse to one of the two banks of four escalators. Then up to the intermediate level, where passengers will switch to the upper bank of escalators that go to the station entrance. It's then around to the right to exit the station. And as I mentioned earlier, both entrances are on the east side, and they lead to a large pedestrian plaza. And this plaza will go directly to the Gabba Stadium, as well as to the busway station Vulture Street and Stanley Street, so passengers coming out of the station will be in the correct direction for the Gabba Stadium. The construction site for this station covers a huge area, and that's because the tunnel boring machines, or TBMs for short, were launched from here, and spoil would have been transported out of the tunnels via this ramp, which is on the main street side. Now it's more likely to be used to get materials into the tunnels, such as track and overhead catenary. Two TBMs board the tunnels from Wollongabba to the northern tunnel portal, and the shorter section to Bogger Road and the southern tunnel portal was excavated using road headers. Within the construction site, the most visible structure is this services building, and this is how it looked in December 2022. And now in April 2023, with this metal structure now in place. And now four months later in August, and handing over to Steve for some further explanations. I expect that shaft coming out of the middle is part of the tunnel ventilation system as an exhaust. Coming around Leopard Street a bit, we can see four very large chillers which have been installed in this open section. And these are part of the air conditioning system for the station. They'll generate cold water, and you can see some of the pipes down below which is going to carry it. So the sides will probably be covered in some sort of metal screens or grills, but the top should be mostly open because the chillers have to reject a lot of heat into the sky. The last time I visited the site was back on the 28th of May, and at that point there were only two chillers installed. Now if you're not a local, you may be wondering what was here before Cross River Rail Works started. Well it's time to find out. Three buildings were demolished to make way for the station construction site, and the largest one was the GoPrint building. It included this road that leads to the busway station and the land centre building, which was here and included a nine-storey building behind it, which looked like this. And the third building was the South Brisbane Dental Hospital that was painfully extracted, although I don't think anyone will miss that. After Wollongabba Station, the tunnels got under the Chalk Hotel, which is looking very sad, and then below other derelict buildings on the east side of Reed Street. I don't think these Queenslander houses will be here for much longer. The tunnels bend very slightly to the right as they go beneath Reed Street itself, the South East Busway, Hawthorne Street and the M3. And from here, you can see the Bogger Road Station construction site in the distance. The tunnels then continue below Fleur Street, Longwood Street and Lockhart Street before starting to bend to the left and the bend continues as the tunnels go under Ross Street, Abingdon Street and Park Road. The tunnels now go under a small part of Quarry Street, and you might recognise something at the end of this road. 
So I'm now at the Boggo Road busway station and behind me you can see Park Road railway station. And if I swing round, you can see a bit of the construction site for the new Cross River Rail station. It will be called Boggo Road and will be the fourth and final underground station for Cross River Rail. But before I get into the new station, let's talk about what is already here. Park Road is a fairly major station with four platforms. It's also where the Cleveland and Gold Coast lines branch off, with the Cleveland line continuing east and the Gold Coast line heading south. And the dual gauge line to Sydney that comes through platform 4 heads south as well. When Cross River Rail opens, all Gold Coast line trains, including the suburban services that terminate at Bean Lee, will go via the Cross River Rail tunnels and serve the new Boggo Road station. And that means that Park Road station will be served by the Cleveland line only. I'll talk more about the proposed service pattern for all lines following the opening of Cross River Rail in Part 3. Park Road Station has stairs and lifts that go to this footbridge, which connects to the Boggo Road busway station, which is right next door and looks much more attractive. It has a similar design to Wollongabba busway station and includes lifts and overhead footbridge that also leads to Park Road Station and full length canopies. It opened in 2009 and is part of the Eastern Busway and will in future be part of Brisbane Metro as well. Interestingly, even though the busway station is called Boggo Road, the platforms are numbered 5 and 6 to follow on sequentially from the four Park Road railway station platforms. The combined footbridge connects Quarry Street and Park Road on the north side with Boggo Road itself on the south side. The new Boggo Road Cross River Rail Station will be between the Busway Corridor and Joe Baker Street, with the entrance being on the corner with Boggo Road. Besides being an important interchange with other rail and bus services, it will also serve the Eco Sciences Precinct, which is right next to the new station, along with the historic Boggo Road Jail, and many residential apartments that have been built close by. The southern part of Boggo Road Station is a cut and cover excavation, whilst the northern part that goes under the Busway Station and Park Road Railway Station was excavated as a mined cavern. This was to avoid major disruption to rail and bus services. There will be one entrance on the north side, and this will lead to a large pedestrian plaza. And this is how the entrance will look, along with the pedestrian plaza. In this 360 image, you can get a closer view of the entrance, and if I do a virtual turnaround, you can see the plaza which extends all the way to the busway station entrance, which is here. The go-kart gates will be here, and this will lead to the escalators and lifts. And looking back towards the entrance, you can see that there will be six escalators. And notice how the design allows natural light to filter down from the roof, and into areas further down via the spaces between the escalators. And that natural light will come in through these three skylight structures within the roof. These escalators will go to an intermediate level, with further escalators continuing to the lower concourse. And these are the lifts that connect the entrance with this lower concourse. And access to the platforms below will be via one of three banks of escalators or two lifts. And just like the other three underground stations, this one will also have an island platform, with banks of escalators in the middle. And the platforms will be just 19 metres below the ground, making it the shallowest of the four new underground stations. Back at street level, there will be a services building, and this will be above the station concourse. So that's enough diagrams, maps and artist impression images, so let's get real with some actual footage, starting with how it looked in May 2021, when it was just a box in the ground. And now the excavation of the mined cavern at the northern end. Of all the Cross River Rail underground stations, this is the best one to view from public vantage points, such as the eastern end of Platform 3 at Park Road Station. And from here, you can see how it looked in December 2022. Opposite this corner of the Eco Sciences building is where the entrance will be. Now viewing this from a train. Not a great deal to see except for the retaining wall alongside Joe Baker Street and this wall that marks the northern side of the future station building. But then I had an idea. Yep, sometimes the bus is better than the train, even if it's a bit wobbly. This is where the station concourse building will be. And right now, all you can see is lots and lots of horizontal and vertical bars that will soon be covered with concrete. Now looking again from Platform 3, and you can see a Super T-beam in the distance. These are often used to cover the station box, and this one is 20 metres long and weighs 60 tonnes. This is now in April 2023, and is taken from Platform 4 at Park Road Station, and it's changed a lot in just four months. And the changes are even more obvious when looking from Platform 3. Now back on the bus, and as it goes past the northern wall of the station concourse, you can clearly see the future wall for this side beginning to take shape. 
and lower down some concrete sections are now visible. This is for the retaining wall. Now a fun fact for you. This station has more steel than the Eiffel Tower. Now for some Cross River Rail photos taken in May 2023, starting with this view from within the station box. And now from the mined cavern at the northern end, and this floor is probably for the lower concourse or mezzanine level. And this is one of the structures supporting the lower concourse floor. And here is another view of this structure and the station box behind it. We haven't heard much from Steve for a while, so he's back now with an update on how it was all looking in August 2023. So we can see a lot of progress has happened here on the external walls of the station, but it still looks very hollow inside, so not a lot of structure is built on the interior yet. And now I'm here behind the Ecosciences precinct, and we can see some more of those precast concrete segments for the mezzanines. Now on another bus, and this is a couple of weeks later in early September, and you get a closer view of the new concrete walls that form the side of the new station building. And as you can see, it's a little less developed at the southern end. Now from a train that is on the dual gauge interstate line as it approaches Park Road Station. And this allowed me to see down into part of the southern end of the station. This might be used for tunnel or station ventilation. At the moment, all city bound suburban trains are using the interstate line, which runs much closer to this construction site. Here is the southern end of the station building again. And you can also see the retaining wall below it. There is still a small gap in the station side wall, and this is close to the entrance on the opposite side, so this scaffolding may well be connected to work to build this station entrance. It's certainly come a long way from how it looked back in December 2022. And if you're wondering why this train was on the interstate line, well it's because the Gold Coast Line loop that runs into Platform 3 has been severed, and why that's happened will be covered in Part 3. Before work started on this Cross River Rail Station, the north side of Boggo Road, where the plaza will be, was parkland and looked like this. And on the east side of Joe Baker Street, a car park was demolished to make way for the station. Boggo Road is predicted to become South East Queensland's second busiest transport interchange by 2036, with over 22,000 passengers using this station every weekday. However, the interchange with Boggo Road Busway Station and Park Road Railway Station won't be particularly easy or quick. So the Cross River Rail Station entrance will be here, and the plaza will be where these demountables currently are. And at the end of the hoardings is the path to the existing busway station and railway station footbridge. Now that will be about a 100 metre walk across the plaza. And if you add 2 or 3 minutes to get from the Cross River Rail platforms to the entrance, and another couple of minutes to get to the train or busway platforms, then you're looking at a 5-7 to seven minute interchange time, and that's assuming minimal congestion. So this will work initially, although not ideal, but when 22,000 passengers a day are using it, the plaza and existing footbridge will be busy and congested, with stressed commuters wondering if they're ok or not. The good news is that this can be improved later on as usage increases, and here are some ways to achieve this. One option could be an aerial concourse bridge from the Cross River Rail Station Plaza to all six platforms. This could be similar to what is currently being built at Sydney's Redfern Station, with lifts and stairs to each platform. Alternatively, as the mined cavern goes under both the busway and railway platforms, perhaps connecting passageways could be excavated in the future. Or a new underground passageway with lifts and escalators could be excavated under the eastern end of the platforms. This could be a smaller version of Sydney's Central Walk, that was built under eight incredibly busy railway lines with minimal disruption. So perhaps something similar could be done here, with trains and buses continuing to run above. So if you're watching this video as a planner or a politician, then you have some options to consider from your not-so-local Sydney boy. What is being included is a pedestrian and cycle bridge that will go over the rail corridor, and its purpose is to connect the Princess Alexandra Hospital with the new Bogger Road station. And here is part of this bridge, as it looked in April 2023. And now over to Steve for how it's progressed since then. In early July, I came down to the back of the Princess Alexandra Hospital to take a look at what was happening with the cycle and pedestrian bridge. And excitingly, it started to be connected to the existing cycleway, which goes past the busway. So it's really exciting to see this getting more and more complete. Still, there are lots of bridge sections to go in, and there's still a lot of temporary supports and other things holding it up. Here we are a month and a half later, and it's mid-August now, and I've come to see where the bridge lands on the other side. So this is Peter Doherty Street, and it's going to come over this roundabout and land on the hill here next to the Ecosciences Precinct building. 
so that will be around here on the map. I'll cover this new bridge in greater detail in part 3, along with the Southern Tunnel Portal, the moving of Dutton Park Station and major rebuilds to the next six stations further south, which will include lifts for step-free access and a new third platform. And a big thank you to Steve for his footage and narration, and I do encourage you to subscribe to the Steve's Technology and Transit YouTube channel for all his latest updates on Cross River Rail. I would also like to thank the Queensland Government and Cross River Rail for making their content available under a Creative Commons license, as this allowed me to use their photos, footage, artist impression images, maps, diagrams and other content in this video. And finally, thanks to you for watching this till the very end, especially as it's one of the longest videos on my channel. So that concludes part 2 of this Cross River Rail series. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have any questions, do leave those in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you'd like me to come to Brisbane more often, then please support me on Patreon as that really helps. Go to patreon.com forward slash transport vlog for further details. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.